Good evening. Tonight we're going to be talking about unconventional gifts. Sometimes we don't consider what we do as a gift from God. All gifts, all good gifts, come from God. We may think it's just who I am. That's just how I'm hardwired. Yes, but your hardwiring came from God. Not everybody can do what you can do the way that you can do it. Your gift has purpose. It's essential to your destiny. A calling is from God. That's your destiny. A gift is the talent that God places in you to fulfill that calling. An anointing is the seasonal energy to accomplish it. God knows your destiny and purpose even before conception. Every single gift is important. I'm going to repeat that slowly. Every gift is important. Most of the time, we don't acknowledge our gift as specifically from God and especially for us. We take them for granted or we never use them. We leave them sitting dormant. Not all gifts are out in the open for everyone to see. Those behind-the-scenes gifts are essential, and they are what we call the unconventional gifts. Those things that we do, or who we are, that most of us do not recognize as gifts. So once we recognize and acknowledge the gifts that we have, then we have to embrace them. We have to nurture them, speak life into them, and develop them by reason of use. I need to add a disclaimer here. Everyone has gifts that are irrevocable from God. However, not everyone uses their gifts for good, let alone for God. I can do a whole teaching on each of these gifts and the different ways that they are used depending on your beliefs and who you serve. These definitions are looking at serving God, not ourselves and not Satan. For this session, we here are focusing on the basic gifts that are in the Word of God and a few ways how we see that they can be used. I'm going to use examples of gifts that are specifically written in Scripture. There are three books the gifts are specifically called out in, but different gifts are referenced throughout the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another word of knowledge through the same, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. In 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, and variety of tongues. And then in Romans 12, 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith, or ministry, let us use in, in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And then in Ephesians 4, And he gave himself to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. 
This is by no means an exhaustive list. There are many more, but for today, I'm going to give you just a small and basic definition of these gifts. I will go into depth in each gift in later classes. So the first one we've got, not in order, none of these are in order, it's just the order that I have them listed. Service. These are those individuals who can come in and get a variety of things done or find somebody that can do it. They're always ready, willing, and able to do any task, large or small. Tongues, those that pray in our heavenly language. Leadership, they have the ability to influence people at their level while directing and focusing them on the big picture, vision, or idea. Hospitality. The ability to create warm, welcoming environments for others, making them feel comfortable and at home. Again, these are very basic definitions. Now, a pastor or shepherd, this is part of the fivefold ministry, easy to remember as the hand of ministry. This is an authority, a hierarchy, and an honor that comes with these positions. But remember, every gift is important. So we have the hand of ministry, which is the fivefold. You've got the apostle, which is the thumb. The prophets is the index finger. Evangelist is the third finger. Pastors is the ring finger. I can't. There we go. And teachers are the little finger. But every gift is important. So the pastor or the shepherd is the ring finger, which you look at on the hand of ministry. The ring finger symbolizes commitment to marriage similar to a pastor's commitment to those who he cares for. The word pastor literally means shepherd. And like the shepherd who watches the sheep, pastoral ministry involves protecting, leading, nurturing, and feeding the flock. Craftsmanship. They have the ability to plan, build, work with their hands from carpenters to flags and is our flag maker our flag bearer artist Bezalel was an artist Steve is our resident artist Paul was a tent maker Lydia was the seller of purple here's an example of being throughout the Bible in Exodus 35 and he has filled him, Exodus 35, 31, sorry. And he has filled them with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all craftsmanship. There you go. And then we've got teaching. Teaching is the little finger of the fivefold ministry. They pass on knowledge and train others to apply their gifts well. Like the little finger of the hand, they are critical to nourishing, to flourishing our disciples. And if you've ever had your pinky hurt, you know that it affects your whole body. Okay. Interpretation of tongues, they are able to interpret the tongues, our heavenly language. Administration, they help steer the ministry towards the successful completion of multiple goals with planning, organization, detail, and supervision. Giving, they share what material resources they have with pleasure and cheerfulness 
and without any thought of return. Exhortation. They are wonderful encouragers, comforters, and support to help someone be all that God wants them to be. Then we've got knowledge. The ability to bring truth to a situation by supernatural revelation. This is often accompanied by a word of God. that way we've got helps and they they render support or assistance to others in the body so as to free them up for ministry these people are essential all people are essential but these people are also essential then we've got miracles Miracles, they have the ability through God and his divine power to alter natural outcomes of life in a natural, supernatural way through prayer, faith, and divine direction. And then we have the apostle, the thumb of the fivefold ministry. And the thumb allows us to grasp things. So the apostle means messenger. Or one sent forth. Apostles are pioneers and builders who are gifted in establishing and upholding churches, ministries, and movements. Healing. They act as a go between in faith, prayer, and by the laying on of hands of the healing of physical, mental, and spiritual sickness. And then we've got prophecy. They have the ability to communicate God's truth and heart to people. Evangelism. They are also part of the fivefold. They're the ring finger. The one that extends the furthest. Oh, they are the third finger, not the ring finger. The third finger. The one that extends the furthest. They are messengers who proclaim the good news and welcome people with a passion for winning others over to become followers of, followers of Jesus. Hmm. Faith. They are firmly persuaded of God's power and promises to believe in God for unseen supernatural results in every arena of life. And we've got discernment. Identify, they identify falsehood to distinguish between right and wrong motives and the spiritual forces at work in those situations. Mercy is the ability to feel empathy and to care for those who are hurting in any way. In 1 Corinthians 12, 21, it says, And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the parts of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those parts of the body which we consider less honorable on those we bestow greater honor, and our less presentable parts become much more presentable. The mercy gift may have a bigger impact than a pastor does when you are right there when needed, personally listening and encouraging someone through a rough time. We've got intercession. They stand in the gap in prayer for someone, something, or some place, believing for, 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 
for profound results. And wisdom understands and brings clarity to situations and circumstances, often through applying the scriptures, the truths of scripture in a practical way. So we all have a variety of these gifts, but usually we can see which ones we are dominant in. Remember, there are a lot more than these, and every gift is important. There are multiple uses for the same gift. You may be more comfortable and more suited to crowds rather than individuals. Building relationships may be a better fit for you than than accomplishing tasks. You may like being told what exactly what needs to be done rather than launching new endeavors. Or you may like supporting others instead of being in charge. An example would be the intercessors are praying for all of those, for all of these to come into the position and flow as God's will, as God wills them. The apostle can tell the vision to the leadership and the administrators. They can then, in turn, rely on the helps and services to get the vision accomplished. Or the people within the volunteer committee may have several with an administrative gifting. One is good at the people side, rallying the people together, finding out what their giftings are. And then another may be better suited to take those names and do the scheduling side of things. One is people-oriented, and one is more task-oriented. But they both have the administrative gifting. Do you see how everyone fits into their perfect position? You'll be surprised at how fun and fulfilling it is when you actually find your perfect position and where you find where you fit in. In Philippians 2, 17, he gives us a visual of pouring your gift back out like a liquid offering to God. I'm going to say that again. He gives you a visual of pouring your gift back out to God like a liquid offering. In Acts 6, 3 and 4, it says, So brothers, select seven men who are well represented and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them the responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching. In verse 5, it says, And everyone liked this idea. When the disciples turned their focus to prayer and teaching, it gave those with other gifts, like helps and serving, to really use their gifts. Not allowing others to use their gifts not only robs them, but that you then become an island unto yourself, thinking that you can do it all. The body needs all types. Let's look at the parable of the talents. Gifts have been given to us and are expected to be used, matured, grown, and invested into the kingdom. In Matthew 25, 23, when the master comes back and settles accounts, the two that had used their talents and grew them were told, Well done, good and faithful servants. You were faithful with a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now the one who had received the one talent also came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. And I was afraid, so I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you still have what is yours. To me, this is like being afraid to step out and use your talent for others and just keeping it to yourself. So in in 26, but his master answered him and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. Did you know that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed? Then you ought to have put my money in the bank. And on my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. For to everyone who has more shall be given, 
and he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. Now throw the wicked servant into the outer darkness, in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We will be held accountable for how we steward our talents and our gifts. So don't reject what makes you special and don't get discouraged by your weaknesses. Your weaknesses fit into someone else's strengths and their weaknesses may fit into your strengths. The kingdom of God is built on the coming together of imperfect people. It's enhanced by the imperfections of one and the strengths of another. It enables grace. It enables us to fit together like a puzzle. And when we all come together in the body of Christ, each in their proper position, flowing in our giftings, we are moving the kingdom forward. In 1 Corinthians 13, it says, If I speak with the tongues of mankind and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I have nothing. And if I give away all my possessions to charity... And if I surrender my body so that I may glory, but do not have love, it does me no good. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not jealous. Love love does not brag. It's not arrogant. It does not act disgracefully. It does not seek its own benefit. It is not provoked does not keep an account of a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It keeps every confidence. It believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And then in verse 13, it says, But now faith, hope, and love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So most of us have numerous unconventional gifts. Recognize them, acknowledge them, embrace them, and then work on developing them through reason of use. And then wrap them up in love. Because all things must be done in love. Because that is the greatest gift that he's given us is the gift of his love. And that's all I have for this session. Do we have any questions? Then blessings. Blessings.